My name is Sam Wagnin and I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning. And today I want to discuss my favorite topic, food <laughs> and the horrors of not having food. And who are the main players in the food market, if not Ukraine and Russia? Ukraine's grain under Russia's reign. Here is some breaking news. Russia and Ukraine compete in the same export markets for grain and fertilizer. Russia has zero incentive to help Ukraine with its outflows of both. Russia has all the reasons in the world to obstruct Ukraine's exports, especially since both polities are at war, may I remind you. Russian drones have been busy demolishing Ukrainian ports and silos on the river Danube, only a few miles away from NATO member Romania. It is the only other route to Ukraine's markets. Now that Russia has pulled out of the Turkey, Turkey broker deal that allowed its mortal foe, Ukraine, to ship corn, wheat and other products via the Black Sea. Grain depots and other pertinent infrastructure in the city of Odessa are faring no better at the hands of the relentless military, Russian military. Several ports have been targeted, including, including Ismail and Reni. Hangars, warehouses and storage tanks went up in flames. Nightly attacks are a daily occurrence. More than 60,000 tons of grain were incinerated there last week alone. World exchanges are aghast. Ukraine is the seventh largest wheat exporter with more than 71% of its land cultivated. On July 17th alone, the prices of cereals climbed between 8 to 10%. That was the day Russia extricated itself from the improbable Black Sea Grain Initiative, which allowed war-ravaged Ukraine to sell close to 33 million metric tons of food to destinations on the brink of starvation worldwide. If anyone had any doubts about the psychopathic nature of Putin and his war, these recent, recent assaults have put these doubts to rest. By disrupting supplies, Russia is targeting the world's poor and famished, whose main source of threadbare sustenance via various international aid programs consists of Ukraine's bread basket bounty. Even more worrying is how brazenly close to NATO have Russian offensive become. Reni is a mere 200 meters yeah, not miles, meters, across the river from a member country, Romania, and only 10 kilometers removed from one of its major ports, Galati. Since Russia has invaded Ukraine, the Danube has been converted by its neighbors, Poland and Romania, into an alternative route for Ukraine's exports via rail, roads and water, and on water. The year preceding the invasion, this river carried 600,000 tons of grain into Europe and beyond. Twelve months later, more than 2 million tons. But this is a fraction of the total available and at risk of rotting uh, harvests. The Danube is also exorbitantly more expensive than seagoing fare. Some of the Ukrainian grain remained stuck in the countries along its path, driving down domestic prices and alienating local farmers in the process. Putin, of course, lost no time in offering Russian grain to replace the vanquished uh, Ukrainian harvests. Moscow will host 50 out of 54 countries in the Russia-Africa summit, and the boss himself is hinting at, quote, free of charge basis comestibles for the more blighted areas on this continent. The countries in need will definitely receive the necessary assurances regarding their need for agricultural products. During the summit, vowed 
Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Vyshinin. In an op-ed syndicated in Kenya's two largest newspapers, the Russian ambassador to Kenya, Dmitry Maksimievich, Maksimichev, I'm sorry, expostulated with the West for the failure of the previous arrangement. He accused Russia's interlocutors for using every trick, quote unquote, to bar Russian grain and fertilizers from global markets. Caught in the crosshairs of this tit for tat are at least 1.3 billion people, most of them denizens of the attendant states in the Africa-Russia summit. The fate of the contracts which the much humbled, much humbled Wagner Group has signed with Mali, Sudan and others is intricately and intimately linked to the looming famine. The Wagner mercenaries are paid in gold and other minerals, which are then transferred to Russia's dwindling coffers, at least in theory. So Russia is coerced to feign interest, however faint, in the African proposal for peace talks with Ukraine. Putin himself is a liability. South Africa effectively barred Putin from attending an economic conference owing to his newly acquired status as a fugitive from justice meted out by the International Criminal Court. Having visited Sub-Saharan Africa only once in the past two decades, Putin did not seem too crestfallen at his cancelled travel plans. Russia is a negligible player in this vast and pivotal continent of Africa less than $18 billion in annual trade and less than 1% of total foreign direct investment. No humanitarian aid to speak of. Promises to quintuple the exchange of goods and services made in the first Africa-Russia summit in 2019, these promises have floundered as usual. <laughs> but Russia is Africa's biggest arms supplier. It also rails against colonial interference in the internal affairs and traditional value systems of various countries there. The, the West must not lose Africa. Africa's population will make up 25% of the global tally by 2050. It is shocking nearsightedness that it is not the West is not offering to offset the shortages of food single-handedly as it easily could. Thank you for listening.